Hey all here, OS Reviews you're watching our hands-on review of the X-Duo X3 II. This is a DAP, or a digital audio player. Now it's almost 2019 and most folks already have smartphones that can play music just fine. However, a DAP does promise to deliver higher quality audio, so it's geared for people who really want to pursue higher fidelity, high-res audio, and want to listen to music like the way it was kind of recorded. So if you're an audiophile, this could be an interesting option to take a look at. It's relatively affordable as far as DAPs go, which is a little surprising uh, since, again, more expensive models with high-end built-in DACs actually can sell for hundreds of bucks. But this one sells for $99, and again, it's one of the more affordable audiophile-grade players that are new to the market. Packaging here is quite simple. This company, uh, based in Shenzhen, China, does have a history of making quite a few of these more professional MP3 players. And uh, the version here is unique because it has built-in Bluetooth at a relatively low price. So you can also connect it to wireless headphones, although that kind of degrades the quality. Uh, you know, for the best audio experience, you would still want to plug in a 3.5 millimeter analog cable that gives you the highest resolution. Uh, but anyways, that's a possibility, and it also supports connecting to a uh, smartphone, so you can use this as kind of a remote to control music from a, another device, supporting aptX. Uh, so in terms of codecs, it also supports FLAC, so a lot of these lossless, uh, lossless compression audio formats, in addition to very high bit rates. Inside of the box, we have another box. So it's presented pretty well, almost like a smartphone, has a fake leather material, and we have just the audio player right on top. Under here, we have a line-in cable. We also have a aforementioned Type-C cable. So I do like how this is the latest standard. We also have some soft-touch rubber feet. So if you want to set it up more permanently on a desk, maybe for use in a home theater, you can prevent it from sliding around on the surface. They also give you two more screen protectors. There's even one pre-installed, so there's three included, which is kind of cool. We have a warranty card and also a more detailed user manual with a QR code that you can scan to learn more information. All right, so taking a closer look at the design of the player next, um, all of these DAPs do have very industrial designs. They, again, are not like the sleek, modern touches that we see in phones these days with bezel-less touchscreens. Really, it's almost a throwback to the days of iPods, uh, almost kind of retro in its design. But again, it's function over form, so it's the quality of the music that matters the most with something like it. Anyways, the entire thing is made out of a solid chunk of aluminum, so it feels very hefty and well constructed. There is an antenna band made out of plastic for the Bluetooth, and we have the x Duo logo on the back. On the bottom, we also have a standard 3.5mm gold-plated audio jack, line-in, the Type-C port for charging, micro SD card slot, and we have a power on-off switch, which is red accented, uh, like on all of x Duo's other players, and there's also a dedicated volume rocker, and that's it. The front features the navigational toggles. This is not a touchscreen, so you have to rely on these to navigate around the main menu. So booting things up, there is a very small LED status light on the top that also glows when you're charging it, and it will boot up uh, in under 20 seconds. The first time you boot it up, you can change the language as well, supporting English, Chinese, Spanish, Japanese, etc. Now, if we do a quick size comparison first, here it is next to the Bass Play P3000. Now, the P3000 is another kind of hi-fi, lossless uh, MP3 player that we reviewed over the summer, also a budget model. In fact, it's a little bit cheaper, but it doesn't have built-in Bluetooth, and it has a smaller display, uh, but you can see kind of the difference there in terms of size. Here it is next to a iPod Touch, uh, the latest generation, which actually has a 5-inch display, so it's a little bit larger and obviously thinner. So jumping into the menu next, I do want to point out that the screen measures 2.4 inches diagonally. It's a LCD IPS panel. You can also use it as a USB DAC for your computer, so passing through the sound from your laptop, uh, which probably doesn't have a great sound card from an ultra portable, you know, from a tablet or a desktop and then plugging in using USB from the USB type C port here and it just will show up as a DAC device. You can see the bits as well as the kilohertz that it's playing at. Then just plug in the headphones uh, onto the player itself and you can listen to music or watch movies uh, with higher resolution. You can see that the interface here is very simple as are all of these players uh, but uses grids to navigate left and right using these icons. Now you can see how the text here is a little bit uh, strange because uh, some of these are almost uh, laid out so it's easier to read if you hold it sideways but really uh, everything is vertically 
oriented. Uh, but anyways, you can go through the music browser, which is like a file manager. There is a battery status on the top. The device has a 2000 milliamp hour capacity pack, which can last you for 15 hours of continuous playback before you need to recharge it again. It takes about two hours to completely charge. Here's the equalizer that you're looking at. There are 10 preset equalizers, and there's also the ability to create a custom one. So you can change all of the kind of fine adjustments here. The visualizations uh, are pretty uh, interesting looking. Here is a rock, classical, jazz, pop, dance, vocal, uh, sentiment, metal, and then back to custom. Uh, the equalizers do actually make an impact on the sound signature and profile, so they're not just there for decorative purposes. It does actually tweak uh, kind of the mids, lows, and highs in terms of which ones are slightly more emphasized, so you can definitely tweak this to your liking. The music interface can be also sorted through album, playlist, genre, and playlists, and your recently played, but there's no way to sort through the tracks alphabetically. Now one strange thing about the menu of the music navigation is something called genre, and this is actually Actually sorted automatically by the player, I guess just by analyzing the frequency and the properties of a track, but it's actually surprisingly accurate. It categorizes it into these different folders like alternative, you can see the track name, and nine times out of ten it's actually pretty accurate. So uh, you can see the up-tempo songs have been sorted as dance, uh, pop songs are sorted here, and again rock, soul songs are sorted here. So again it seems to automatically categorize them. But something to keep in mind is that by default the player actually doesn't have any built-in memory, so it relies completely on external storage. So in that sense, I do wish there would have been at least a basic micro SD card included in the box. I've cranked up the screen brightness through the settings, so now it's a little bit easier to see. This is only at uh, 8 out of 10, so it can get a little bit brighter as well. Uh, so moving into audio quality and performance next. Now technically, the built-in DAC is the AK4490, and it also uses a TI processor for handling, again, all the menu navigation. And uh, Overall, I would say that the sound quality is excellent. Now, this is still a budget audiophile player, so like I said, they can get more expensive. The sound signature of this particular DAC is a bit more warm. What that means is it has more of an emotional uh, sensation if you're listening to vocals, as opposed to you know being extremely detailed and uh, going to be extremely neutral. So some of the micro details might be a little bit missing, but all in all, it sounds excellent. Um, mids, lows, and highs all sound extremely clean. There's no static, there's no distortion, of course, and a bass can get very punchy if you tweak the equalizer, but at the same time in the default settings, it never really overpowers the mids and the trebles, so everything just sounds perfectly balanced. I do like some of the smaller details of the ergonomics after using it as well. I just really appreciate how there's a small dot on the plus key of the volume controls, just making it a little bit easier to press when it's in your pocket. Uh, this is what it looks like when it comes to adjusting the volume, uh, also a pretty cool animation. Trying it out with a number of different audio formats, including FLAC, uh, uh, encoded at various bit rates, I was again fairly impressed. It never encountered really an issue with not recognizing a track, even testing out with uh, many different Kodaks. So it does support a ton of different uh, you know, variations there. And because this is a company based in China, it also supports a lot of uh, languages. So if you, you know, are listening to world music, you know, uh, languages and songs that are in, let's say, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, it will display all of those characters just fine. If I'm playing back a song, I can also tap on what looks like the Windows key. This is actually the menu button, so it brings up additional settings that you can control, such as shuffling this track. Uh, I can also kind of loop it, I can delete it from the player, I can also add it to my favorites. Some other observations here, I've plugged in some Type-C headphones, and you can see that the remote actually still works as well, including playing and pausing the track, and sound comes out just perfectly fine. Uh, the only slight quirk I found if you are using Type-C uh, digital headphones, even though it's still using the DAC and passing through the audio very nicely, is sometimes the volume can be hit or miss. So it's a little bit different from the analog port. In that sense, oftentimes when you plug it in, it actually comes out at a higher volume. So by default, these are really loud. I have to turn them down almost to one, uh, before I get them very comfortably for listening. Uh, but even on you know, Type-C headphones, if you have these which are active noise canceling, you can flip a switch and that still works as well. So you can you know, listen to music uh, when you are on a plane or in the train and it still works really nicely. Of course, uh, there are some phones these days which are beginning to take audio more seriously as well. Some of LG's phones that have quad DACs built on in, but this still gives you a bit more of versatility, such as again, connecting to your computer and using it as a DAC that way. And the controls and ergonomics 
electronics as well as battery life for listening to music alone are still slightly better than a phone because all the radios and antennas are going to drain the battery a little bit faster. Uh, with that being said, this thing again is for music listening only. There's no built-in Wi-Fi, there's no uh, video watching, so you are just uh, going to be using it for audio playback. Uh, so if you are interested in getting again an audio player that is going to really improve the listening experience compared to again a smartphone or something less expensive, this is definitely a great value at its price. Uh, you can check out more details in the links down below. But that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the X Duo, uh, the X3. This is the second generation model.